Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today we're talking about the holiday collection from ColourPop. I had to do this voiceover style in order to get it out quickly. Otherwise, I would not have this video done before launch. This collection is launching on Thursday, November 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so make sure you check your time zones to see what time that is for you. I'm going to take you through every single piece in this collection. I'm going to show you close-ups. I'm going to tell you prices. I'm going to give you swatches. And we're also going to do a whole bunch of comparisons with the palettes. So let's break down this collection. We have four Lux lip oils. These are priced at eight US dollars a piece. There are two pressed powder blushes. These are going to be $10 a piece. There is a glitterly obsessed mini duo and this little set is priced at $10. Last, definitely not least, we have two different eyeshadow palettes. These are going to be priced at $18 a piece. Let's start off with the lip oils. This is the exact same applicator, this flat paddle applicator as all of the other Lux lip oils. It just has a little special packaging on the outside, but it is the same applicator, same size, same shape, same scent. It has a little bit of a licorice scent to it. It's not really my favorite, but I do find that it dissipates pretty quickly. It doesn't end up smelling or tasting like licorice for very long on my lips. These also have the coordinating, really beautiful outer packaging. And formula-wise, these seem to be the same as all the other Lux lip oils that have come before. Not my most favorite lip oil formula. They do feel very hydrating. They just don't give me as much color as I prefer from a tinted lip oil. I'm going to show you all four of these shades side by side here. You can see even applied to the arm, there's not a ton of difference between the four shades. And once they're applied to the lips, they pretty much all look the same. The deepest berry shade called Hay, I think is probably one of the more pigmented lip oils that they've released to date but overall they just end up looking kind of shiny and clear. Now let's talk about the blushes. This is where you can really see the packaging start to shine. These look the same at first glance, the outer packaging, but once you take a closer look, you'll see that Love Story has a gold metallic detail while Secret Crush has a rose gold metallic detail. Let's take a close up look at the Love Story packaging first. This has a raised metallic detail and even the labels on the top have this really luxurious, very gorgeous, romantic feel. Both the boxes and the compacts themselves have this textured detail and the shade names are printed on the back, of course. These are a heavy duty cardboard and... They have a magnetic closure as well as a little mirror inside. When you take a close-up look at these blushes, you will see that they both have some little micro glitters throughout. This is not an overspray. This is actually a part of the powder. We'll see the exact same detailing in the shade called Secret Crush. It's the same vibe, the same style, but all of the little textured metallic details are rose gold with this Secret Crush blush. But same thing, cardboard packaging, magnetic closure, mirror inside. This is also a glittery blush. It's just a slightly different shade. I'll go ahead and show you the two swatch side by side because I think they look more similar in the pan than they do applied to the skin. Love Story is more of a warm terracotta type of color, whereas Secret Crush is definitely a bright blue-based type of pink. These are decently pigmented, and I don't prefer the shimmery blushes, but I do think these are pretty nice overall. 
Now let's talk about the Glitterly Obsessed Mini Duo. This comes in packaging where the plastic slides off. The shade names are printed on the actual cardboard holder on the back. And I want to reiterate that the Glitterly Obsessed formula is meant for the body, for the face. Some people even put it in their hair, but this is not formulated to be an eye product and it is not recommended by me or by ColourPop to apply these to your eyes. These do have special packaging on the lids and they have little stickers on the bottom to indicate which shade is which. I'm going to show you a close-up now of what these look like in their little jars. In your eyes is definitely a chunkier glitter and Gaze is a more fine glitter. Gaze is a little bit more golden, but they have a very similar tone once they're applied to the skin. I think the main difference for me, once they're out of the pot and applied to the skin, is the size of the actual little glitter particles. I'm not a big body glitter user, so I just honestly don't have much of an opinion on these, but here they are. Now let's talk about something I definitely have opinions on. That's the two palettes. These are priced at $18 a piece. They are 12 pan palettes with special packaging. We're seeing that same gold and rose gold metallic carry over to the palettes. We're going to take a close up look at the Boudoir Noir palette first. This has the gold and that does match the shades inside but I just love this textured, really rich, luxurious packaging. Of course, I have to point out there is one shade in this palette that has the eye safety warning. It's the shade called Bedtime Story. You can see indicated here it is not intended for use in the immediate eye area. You can see that little baby asterisk there. That's the only eye safety warning on this palette. When we open up, there is a mirror in here. This palette contains six true matte shades, four true shimmers, that one pressed glitter that had the eye safety warning, and then one matte shade with glitter. Taking a look at the swatches of this palette, the finger swatches are on top and then the brush swatches are below. I do not brush swatch pressed glitters just because they don't apply very well that way and frankly I don't want to get my brush all glittery. But here you can see all the shades in this palette laid out performance wise. It's really top notch. Mattes and shimmers alike are applying beautifully. You can't even really tell the difference between the finger swatches and the brush swatches. And I just love this mustardy yellow shade called Desire. Personally, I think this is the more interesting of the two palettes. I love a good purple or burgundy eyeshadow, but I think that this Boudoir Noir palette is just a little bit more interesting in my ColourPop collection. Now let's take a look at the Ménage à Moi palette. This one has the rose gold accents and it does really coordinate with the shades inside that tend to be a little bit more rosy, pinky, purpley. And I do want to point out this palette has three eye safety warnings. Confess and Big T's are pressed glitters and the shade No Drama has a pigment warning. So just patch test that to make sure you don't have any irritation, staining, or any kind of allergic reaction and you should be good to go. I always recommend patch testing if you're not sure. Now let's take a look inside this palette. Again, we have a nice big mirror in here. This one has five true matte shades, three shimmers, two pressed glitters, and then two matte shades with glitter. Initially, I thought that I would be more interested in this palette shade-wise just because I do tend to love these rosy, purpley, burgundy type of shades but I just found this one to be a little bit more similar to other palettes in my ColourPop collection and in my collection as a whole. Formula-wise, this seems to be really consistent with the previous palette, the Boudoir Noir palette. 
just really nice opaque swatches with both the finger and brush. I will say I don't think there's enough variation in this palette. There are some shades that just end up looking pretty similar when you add that with the fact that there are two pressed glitters and I just don't wear pressed glitters on my eyes for safety reasons. This ended up not really being my favorite of the two. So now let's do everybody's favorite part. It's comparison time. I have so many comparisons for these palettes. I took the most requested palette comparisons from my Instagram and I tried to do as many of those as I possibly could. First, we're comparing the Boudoir Noir palette. This time it's with the Huda Beauty Khaki Haze Obsession. This isn't really as similar as I thought it would be. Maybe one or two shades similar among these two palettes. Definitely the same kind of idea, but shade wise, I don't really find these two to be really similar at all. Next up is a very highly requested comparison. This is with the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. I think this one has a lot more similarities than the Huda Khaki Haze palette. Still not a one-to-one. -one. I wouldn't call this a dupe, especially with that green shade in the ColourPop palette, but overall pretty similar vibes and a lot of shades that I would say, even if they're not exact dupes, they're pretty close and you could get some really, really similar eye looks between these two palettes. Now we're looking at the Child palette. This is a collaboration between ColourPop and Star Wars The Mandalorian. I don't really think that these have much in common at all, but I do think that just in general, the Child palette is one that's going to get brought up anytime we see even an inkling of green. This is going to be one that people want to see a comparison with. So fair enough, at least our curiosity is satisfied. I could actually see these two palettes working really well together if you needed to deepen up the child palette or maybe brighten up boudoir noir they could be good companions now we're moving on to the wild nothing palette wild nothing in general is much much lighter and it definitely has more of a pinky peach overall tone to it but seeing these shades laid out together, it seems like they are two different iterations of the same idea. They feel like the same idea, even though the shades really aren't super similar. I would say maybe the like pale shimmery shade, but overall, these two strike me more as distant cousins than even really sisters, frankly. Next, we're going to compare with this little nine pan grandeur palette from the Dark Blooms release. Basically, this collection just came out a couple of weeks ago, and I think we're really seeing some more overlap here than we did with the previous ColourPop palette comparisons, especially a couple of these neutrally shades. I'm getting the same feeling here of just different iterations of the same idea. It's like Wild Nothing, Boudoir Noir, Grandeur, they all feel like a neutral palette with a splash of green, and I think that's just been the theme of ColourPop releases this year. So let's move on to the very last comparison. This was another one that was very highly requested on my Instagram. This is the Good as Gold palette, actually from last year's holiday release. And I do think we're seeing a decent amount of similarities here. Good as Gold is decidedly more gold, which I guess it would be weird if it wasn't given its name. Again, pretty similar to the Urban Decay Naked Honey. I think while it's not a one-to-one -one dupe, you could get some pretty pretty similar eye looks from these two palettes. Moving on to the Menage a Moi palette comparisons now. First up is another Huda palette. This time it's the Naughty Nude palette. This just released not too long ago from Huda Beauty and I think this is decently similar. I wouldn't go as far as to say 
their exact dupes, but I would say if you have one, you definitely don't need the other because you are really getting the same vibes, the same looks, the same type of shades from both of these two palettes. So if you already have Naughty Nude, you know right away you can skip this ColourPop palette. Now, Urban Decay's Naked Cherry comparison, another one that a lot of people were asking about, and rightly so. These two are incredibly similar shade-wise. The color story is just exactly the same. I know not every shade is a one-to-one -one match, but this is pretty darn close to being the same palette. In my opinion, the biggest glaring difference is the ColourPop palette having those glitters that the Urban Decay one doesn't have, which is a bonus for Urban Decay in my book. Now we're going to look at this little nine pan palette. This is the Making Mauves palette. And I think once you see these shades side by side, they're definitely about 50-50. About half of these shades are close enough that I would call them dupes and the other half are just a difference in undertone. Making Mauves is a lot cooler. So I could actually see these two working well together as companion palettes, but overall not really much of a difference aside from those handful of cool purples from Making Mauves. Next up is the Give It To Me Straight palette, and this is another one that it's a really, really similar vibe. Give It To Me Straight just has a couple of those orange and copper shades in there that set it apart and make it more toasty, orangey than Menage A Moi, but there's still a whole lot of overlap shade-wise here, especially in the last three shades are so close to being exactly the same. So there's, there's that. Now we're going to take a look at the You Had Me At Hello palette. This is another 12 pan that actually has a mirror. So that's the first similarity. This one's not quite as similar as the Give It To Me Straight palette, but it's still a really overall similar color story. You Had Me At Hello has a couple more yellowy undertoned shades and that's really the main difference here for me but the you had me at hello palette has actually been discontinued so the good news is if you missed out on that one then you have a pretty suitable substitute here about to release in the ColourPop holiday collection Last comparison, and let me tell you, by this time, my arm was on fire. This is the Bye Bye Birdie palette, and I expected these to be more similar than they actually are. Bye Bye Birdie has a lot of really, really light shades. It's something that I always forget about this palette, and it does have some more vibrant, bright colors as well. So, I don't think these are super similar, but I also have a hard time saying that they're super different. Seeing these two together, I think they might actually be pretty nice companion palettes, work together well. I kind of gave you my thoughts along the way, but I just want to do a little wrap up, a little recap. The Lux Lip Oils are just fine. If you are going to get one, I would say just get one because they all end up basically looking exactly the same on the lips. When it comes to the blushes, I prefer the more nudie terracotta shade called Love Story, but I gotta be honest, I think that I like the packaging of this product more than I actually connect with the blush itself, so just kind of take that recommendation with a grain of salt, but you know, just being honest with you. When it comes to the glitterly obsessed glitters, I'm not a glitter person, so I will refrain from giving you any opinions on that, but I am an eyeshadow palette person, and I will definitely tell you that Boudoir Noir is my pick. I absolutely love, love, love the packaging on both of these. I think this is beautiful. It's a beautiful holiday release, definitely a giftable type of product, so I think that's great. Personally, when I first opened up these two palettes, I thought they were both 
eh, kind of boring, kind of lackluster, but actually seeing the shadows applied and actually playing with them, Boudoir Noir became for sure my pick. I love this mustard yellow, this really pretty olive green. I think this is an interesting twist on a neutral palette, and personally, I really, really like this one. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about these palettes. What do you think about this collection as a whole? Are you interested in this? Is this going on your wish list? Are you going to be giving these as gifts? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience with this voiceover format so that we can get videos out a little bit more quickly. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Also, if you're wondering why I don't do more comparisons, this is what my arm looked like after doing all these comparisons and it really hurt and it was really red. And I will do more on my Instagram, I promise. Okay, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. I love your face. I love you so much. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.